In this video, Vinay Shah and I are removing a dislocated crystalline lens in a patient with Marfan syndrome and then placing a secondary lens via the haptic tuck technique. Here we're marking the axis that we're going to use with an RK marker and then forming peritomies in these areas. Next, we're using a diamond blade set to a depth of approximately six, 275 microns to outline the scleral flaps. Once the flaps are outlined, we go ahead and use a crescent blade to elevate the flaps. And unlike previously, instead of using a needle to make a track for the haptic, I'm using the crescent blade here to make more of a pocket. I found that this is easier, and since we've changed to using an Aaron Scientific EC3 lens with very soft, flexible haptics, it tends to go into this pocket without a problem. Again, we're making a pocket here with the crescent blade and the other flap in preparation for tucking of that haptic. The case is now turned over to Dr. Shaw, who performs the lensectomy and vitrectomy. We changed to this Aaron Scientific EC3 lens because the haptics are more flexible and more forgiving. We have encountered a few instances where externalizing the haptics from the Alcon MA60 lens resulted in them being bent or even broken. This new lens seems to be very easy to use. So we've measured about two and a half millimeters back and we use a 23 gauge needle to enter the eye underneath of each of the scleral flaps in line with our previous marks. Next, the EC3 lens is going to be inserted through this 2.75 millimeter clear corneal incision superiorly. As the lens is inserted, an MST duet forcep is inserted into the eye to grasp that haptic as it comes out of the inserter cartridge. And again, you don't have to be quite as careful with these haptics as they tend not to break or bend as you pull them out of the eye. So now once we've confirmed that that leading haptic has been externalized, we can rotate the lens into the eye, leaving that trailing haptic outside of the eye. Dr. Shaw is now holding the inferior haptic and that leaves me free to use two duet forceps to flip over the superior haptic and then go ahead and put it into the eye. It's important to have your infusion going here as it is tough to get in and out of the eye if it becomes soft. So now we can grasp the externalized haptic and go ahead and put it into the eye and hand it off to the awaiting pair of duet forceps. Both haptics are now externalized and then tucked into the pockets that we made previously with a crescent blade. The wide pockets also make it easier to center the lens and result in less tilt. So now both haptics are tucked and the lens appears centered and stable without any tilt. I like to use suture to close the cornea as well as the scleral flaps. I just find that this is more secure and more cost effective than using glue. So once the flaps are closed and the cornea is closed, we take out the vitrectomy ports and close the conjunctiva with vicryl suture.